I am Jim Collison and live from the Gallup Studios here in Omaha, Nebraska, as well as Studio B. This is Gallup's Theme Thursday, Season 4, recorded on November 29th, 2018. Theme Thursday is a Gallup webcast series that dives deep into the Clifton Strengths theme, one theme at a time. And today is woo. If you have questions, comments, or contributions during this webcast, we do have a live chat room. It's available for you right below the main video window. If you just take a peek down there, bottom left hand corner, it says log in, choose that, click that, choose the guest account, take the guest and the name and number out, put your name in so we know who you are, hit submit. You'll be in, or you can join us with any of the social media uh, platforms that are available Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, any of those, if you want to join those um, as well, you can sign in with that. But most important, leave us a note in the chat room. We'll be taking your questions live where you're here. If you're catching us after the fact, if you have questions about anything we talk about or anything at all, you can send us an email, coaching at gallup.com. Don't forget to visit the Gallup Strength Center, just gallupstrengthcenter.com for all your Clifton Strengths coaching resources and training needs. You can also catch the video and both streaming and downloadable audio for offline listening. We call that podcasting. All the cool kids are doing it. I'm not kidding. It's available on your phone. It's an app. Now you can just go in there, search for Gallup Webcasts. We are there. You'll never miss an episode. And we got some great things scheduled for 2019, so you don't want to miss out on it. Join us over. Uh, the instructions on how to do that are on our coach's blog. Go to coaching gallup.com. Micah Libert is our host today. She works as a workplace consultant here at Gallup. And Micah, always great to have you. Welcome to 34 of 34 as we talk about Woo and Theme Thursday. We did it. We made it to the end of the alphabet. It's time for Woo. You know, Micah, with 34, it does seem like you think, okay, 34 of these, not hard to do, but it takes <laughs> us all year. We started late this year. You had a little event that uh, required us to start late. Right. A human. Another human. <laughs> <laughs> I had a little human. You had a little human. Yeah. But it, it it is one of those things, I think, as we think about working through all 34 themes, that it, it's a journey of themes. Like it's it's work to get through these. Is. 34 is just enough that you really kind of need to work at it. And I think as we think about coaching or or ourselves working through these themes, I think it's a significant, and we'll talk maybe more about this in our closing session next week, but it really is a journey, don't you think? It is. And I'm, I'm glad you brought that up, Jim. I think that, you know, originally when, when Kurt Liesfelder, our great friend and mentor started this, his mission was just to make sure that we're speaking that common language and giving each person who, who focuses on that journey of all 34, that open road to say at the end of this destination is you loving this theme. Here you go. You know, here's everything that we need to know to really stand firm in our understanding of the theme, hoping that that gets us toward greater compassion, greater understanding, greater admiration for them. Now that we've gone through, by the end of today, four full seasons, it really does, it's some heavy lifting. And, and it really does, for me, underscore the importance of if we're coaches, especially, but if we're just anybody who's going to use Clifton Strengths, committing to this being an endless journey of, of learning. Um, I don't have high learner. The idea of being a lifelong learner is just sort of a phrase that doesn't really excite me. But when I think about the work that it really does take to understand each theme, to realize that there is a, a sort of standard definition, and then to look at the nuance that each theme can bring, and then to think about maybe how do I tell this within a story? How do I notice this within somebody? Or do like we're doing with this season, how do I help people understand what this looks like and how they can invest in it? Um, it's not easy. 34 is is certainly enough that it feels like, it feels like you're doing some work. So, you know, if if you if you feel like you're huffing and puffing and, and you're working a little bit hard, that's that's how you should feel here. It's 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 good work. It's it's also a time investment. So don't uh, don't kid yourselves as you're thinking about working through all 34. Um, it takes some time, and and mm -hmm. Mike and I it takes us a whole year basically to 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 get through these. Well, let's not cheat woo anymore as we think about a brief description of that. When we think about woo, the maybe the most questioned theme because what the heck is woo, right? I think. <laughs> Most of the folks listening know that, but uh, let's let's get at that brief description. 
Sure. So here's just my brief around Woo. It's uh, it's about being socially awake and aware. Uh, there's a social intelligence, a speed of social connection to Woo. People with high Woo have a comfort among people. They're drawn to mastering the challenge of gaining trust from moving from stranger to acquaintance, similar uh, to, I think, the theme of learner, which is a strategic thinking theme, moving from not knowing to knowing. People with high Woo like to go through that discomfort, going from somebody who's a stranger to somebody who's who feels more familiar. And they don't just break the ice, they really melt it through their warmth, through their ability to welcome, uh, they're charming and open. It is an influencing theme, uh, and we'll get to talk quite a bit about it today. One of my favorite stories on the Gallup side, and I think I say this in th season three, maybe even season two, uh, here at Gallup, we have done events where we strategically placed, you know, we have tables of people and we want conversations to go on. And we have strategically placed woos at various tables, spread them out mm -hmm. so that they will get conversation going. They will be warm and charming and never afraid uh, oftentimes to, to, all right, table, like, let's do this thing. Like, and they'll, they'll be the ones meeting all the people at the table, right? They work great recruiters, those kinds of things. Oh, I'll tell you, whenever I'm setting up a classroom, if I've got, especially for a, a strengths-based event, but even some of our you know management trainings, or we're talking about even just briefings about what do we know, we typically have people's top five on their name tag. And that's to, that's you, usually my first sort is how do I make sure that there's somebody with woof at every table? Because what you're doing there is you are kind of planting little time bombs of comfort, right? Like you're making sure that if I, I can typically count on someone with woo, even if it's still in that, you know, infancy, that sort of raw state that they're going to quickly make the people around them feel like they're seen, like they're acknowledged and like they're comfortable. And that lends itself to a better learning environment. Let's talk a little bit more, break that down. Where are they the best and what kind of value do they bring? Sure. The, the value that Woo brings to a team is adding that spark of comfort to social situations. And maybe this is just the Woo and me talking, but I can't really name a situation that isn't social. <laughs> It's about disarming any anxiety by making people feel seen, people feel special. Um, there is a, I think there's an attractiveness about woo where people are attracted to you because you're attracted to them. Um, it's it's about willingly and quickly loving people, um, genuinely noticing things that you like in others. Um, I also think about woo as uh, you're, you're really on when you're around other people. Um, it, you, you've got this incredible ability to adjust to what the audience or your colleagues need socially and to be able to provide it. There's, there's a bit of a flexibility and an agility to woo to be able to say, I'm picking up on what's going to delight you, what's going to make you comfortable, what's going to create hospitality, and I can, I can make that happen. Um, so I think it's about warming up the bonds between colleagues, between strangers, between, between partners. Um, the value, and I think when woo's at its best, it's, it's making work fun by, by celebrating quickly um, the people around you and by, you know, acknowledging not just what they're doing, not just, you know, how they fit into your puzzle of what you need to get done, but acknowledging and appreciating their, their humanness. What can they do more of? What, what, what kind of things should they be volunteering or raising their hand for? In answering this question, all that came to mind was go to the people. Spend time in social situations. Um, if you've got high woo, you may not realize how uh, powerful that is or how different your energy is when you're around others. Um, so do it on purpose. Don't shy away from social events, even if you don't quite feel like you're you know, prepared to win that social event. I'll tell you, I, I mean, I have woo. It's it's probably one I can notice going back as as far into my childhood as possible. Um, but I still will find myself like if I am in a grocery store and I'm not dressed for the day or I'm just not up for it or I'm feeling kind of tired and perhaps a couple aisles over I see somebody I know. Sometimes my first instinct is to duck and leave and avoid that person because I don't want that social interaction to be anything other than perfect. No, I don't even have high maximizer. It's just that awareness that every interaction with somebody is a great moment, a great opportunity. Um, I think I need to acknowledge that with Woo, I'm already going to be naturally better at being from it, even if you feel like you're not on. Just lean into it. Your, your natural tendency to notice people is going to give you that energy, even if you're not sort of leading the energy into the room itself. I also think, uh, you know, something else you can do more of with Woo is take responsibility for putting people at ease. Be the hospitality champion of your team. This might be formally by by greeting and welcoming or informally by by speaking up for people or acknowledging them in a quieter one-on-one -on -one setting. 
Micah, in, for those of you who've been to the summit and who've been to our cocktail reception on, on the Monday night of that, um, we have a big bridge that goes across from the second floor to the first floor. And the atrium is down below. And I spend a lot of time, many of you know, I spend a lot of time down in the atrium. It's an actually battery charging event for me when I yeah. can be in groups of people. Um, I can get a lot of work done in the in the midst of chaos. It's where sometimes I even need it to, to mm -hmm. get work done. But oftentimes, you know, I think uh, for me, when we think about this idea of doing, of you know, what can I do more of? And you, you kind of said, you know, go to the people. As I'm crossing that bridge, I have a decision. Go to my office where it's peopleless and yeah. cold and, you know, or make the right turn to go down to the stairs to where there's people, right? Or there, there might be people. And I spend a lot of time, like if there's opportunities or somebody I know, uh, there was a question in the chat room, does Wu get tired of the same people all the time or working or helping the same people all the time? I, I For me, no. I like to be, I like to be energizing in that. And I have found even Micah, sometimes when I'm down, the goal, the, the, what brings me up is people. So, mm. you know, if I'm feeling a little bent or out of sorts or struggling a little bit, I can gain energy from a group by just engaging. And it might be a slow start. I know I've sometimes they'll, they'll ask me a few questions and I'll start slow, but as the conversation goes on, I can kind of help. It'll help me get kind of energy back. You It'll feel help. yourself warming up too. Do I do? No, I do. And I think actually for, as we think about woo, uh, many have communication in there. Those are some great opportunities. If you're feeling when you, when you think about, when we think about environments that best support woo, it's oftentimes, or can be oftentimes these situations where we need to be in a situation to influence. I like that word we, in the yeah. chat room. We've used the word manipulate. And it has a negative, that word has a negative connotation, in, at least in English, but it is an influence, right? It's influencing. It's, it's, and to put yourself in that situation, I, I just love when you said go to the people, because that's been very, right. very helpful for me. So you know that about yourself now, Jim. Um, is there ever a time where you're tempted to not turn and, and to just go to your office? Like, does that feel like a conscious decision? Not, not very often, just to be honest, I, I, I would almost always choose people instead of isolation. Mm -hmm. Um, it's just kind of the way I'm built. I don't, and it, but it is a conscious thought, Micah. I mean, I, yeah. I, I think like I'm walking across the bridge and I can go right to people or straight ahead to my office. And that's not mm -hmm. always what I think conventional wisdom would tell you to do, right? I, we, we get told uh, going up, up through school, uh, you know, be efficient, go do your work, put your head down and move forward. Right. But do you, does it get distracting for you? What kind of, does it help you actually get stuff done is, yeah. is really my, really my yeah. question. Well, in, in my role, it's really important. I don't, um, when it comes, oftentimes I have influencing things that need to happen and it's tough to influence people through email. I just, it's just inefficient. doesn't work very well. Well, when I end up in the front of people, I mean, I, whenever I need to talk to somebody, I get up and I walk to them or I go find them in the building. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just a lot better to influence them face to face, person to person, right? Having that, that winning, influencing, hey, I want to talk about this before we make a decision on it and I'm not going to do 50 emails back and forth. So right. yeah, I, it's a, for me, it's a very conscious decision. Um, the, in, in the best, the environments that best support me on that are environments where I can, I can actually do that. In some cases with you, Micah, I can't just get up, but we do video, right? Mm -hmm. Every time we need to talk, we turn the video on. And right. so that's important for me. What other environments do you think support Wu? We've talked a little bit about this, but I think it's about creating that environment, right? So we have this unwritten rule, Jim and I do that anytime we talk, we turn on our video. And that is a conscious decision, right? That is uh, something that we've noticed works better for us. And so we commit to doing it. And poor Jim gets to see me usually eat a sandwich and put on makeup every week. <laughs> but, but we're at that space. And so I think whether it's one on one or whether it's with larger groups of people, the environments that support woo are where you can plant yourself amongst others. Uh, and maybe that looks like you are always turning on your video camera, or maybe it looks like you make sure that you're the first person to say hello, or the person who attends that luncheon or shows up at the fundraiser or takes a gift to your neighbors. Uh, put yourself in those situations because not only are you going to be better than others at making that authentic and genuine connection, it's also going to feed you. Uh, stay curious, I think, also um, about identifying your audience. So 
get to know who your constituents are, um, who notices the work maybe that your team does, who has an investment in your success. The better that you can understand uh, who you're serving, the more often and the more effectively you can be the face for your team, for your product, for your family toward that audience. I was doing some pre-reading and I'm pretty excited about this next section where uh, we're going to talk about what can we worry less about, Micah, when we think about uh, woo. Pre-reading as in like you read my mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'm going to tell you what my thought are and, and I want your, want your feedback as somebody with woo, Jim. Um, worry less about this. Um, woo is not always loud. I think woo gets this caricature sometimes because it sounds like a fun word to say. <laughs> it sounds like woo, but it's, it's not always loud. I think you can make someone feel seen and feel comforted in gentle and quiet ways. But even when you're doing that, even if you're, you're wooing sort of subtly, you're still going to be doing it on purpose. You're still going to be um, intentional about those interactions. That idea that you should turn off in order to recharge just likely doesn't feed you as much as it might other people. Quiet time, alone time, introverted time might not serve you as much as it does others. So you don't have to entertain or manage the energy of every room at every time. There is, I think, that ability to say, I'm going to I'm gonna surprise and delight and be the ringleader of emotion in this room. And you can do that really well. You don't have to do that all the time. Sometimes it's important to pack up and go find a new public space to socialize. I think about like, so Thanksgiving in, in the US was last week. Um, and I like to think about the rituals that go along with that of how do you, you relax after that big meal. And some folks like to turn on football and and be by themselves. Others like to you know retreat to their corner of the house and maybe read a book. Realize that if you've got woo, the way that you're going to relax and recharge is probably to head out to those Black Friday sales, right? To, to do something energized that's full of people. Um, that's going to allow your closest allies to get some of that solitary respite perhaps that they need, but also acknowledge that being alone is not going to be what will recharge you. Yeah. You know what I have found though, Micah, for me, and, and I would agree with you up until about four years ago when I started to do this job and it's so intense from the amount of, of influence and communication that I need to do on a regular basis. I am finding, I do need that quiet time, the time away. I think the Wu can get characterized as energized by people all the time. And I'm finding that as I get a little bit older and as I do, as the intense communication in this job takes, I do need some, some yeah. alone time. I do need to back away, uh, so to speak, and get that. And so I think that's one of these, uh, these elements, Micah, where we can't just take a standard definition and apply it to somebody and say, you're always going to be this way. No, because, no, not at all. Because it, in, 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 you know, even my role has dictated kind of the way some things have kind of changed with that, right? And, and you know, woo communication, I've, in the last five years, I've learned a lot of lessons about strategic communication <laughs> and not just blast it out. It's it like what I did when I first started doing this, but being more timely, being more strategic. And then, and then having people help me with that, like getting good feedback. That's a little bit of maximizer into that yeah. and to say, getting some good feedback. So yeah, well, I, I would also, say I've changed a little bit. I would also say though that your your role has expanded a little bit, right? So that um, maybe you used to spend a low time on social media. Well, now that's part of your job is to be there. So I think maybe there's professional public time and then there's personal public time. I mean, I know that you like to spend your weekends still around your family and your kids, right? Yeah, yeah. No, and I, I enjoy that. I'm in, and I'm enjoying. You were mentioning Thanksgiving. Typically, we're in a big crew this year family, multiple families, and you would think we would want to be all of them. No, I retreated out to the garage with mm. four of the guys yeah. and uh, two of them, my children, and we enjoyed an hour together, um, you know, with a, with an adult beverage and uh, chit chat. Yeah. And that was a really good, you know, that was just a really good, it was kind of a retreat for me. Yeah. So I think it, those high end woo kind of, we need to think through that a little bit and not feel guilty. I used to kind of think like quiet time to recharge, like really? Mm. And now I kind of, there are times I crave it. Don't get me wrong. I'm still super energized. Like 
I was feeling at 10 o'clock this morning, I was like, oh, I'm not sure I could do this today. I was super tired. And, you know, and yet as I got you on here and as the crowd started coming in the chat room, I could feel myself getting more and more amped up with each person. So don't, so don't get me wrong, right. but I just want to say wooers, if you do retreat, don't feel guilty about it. No, Don't, not at all. Yeah. Not at all. I think it's also just about acknowledging the energy that you can get by exploring different dynamics of public space. So um, Wu is going to feed off of even just the presence of others without even having to be a part of that or acknowledge it. I, I say this you know, from my own experience of I have high Wu and I was teaching um like traveling and teaching, which is something I haven't done for a long time. I used to be about 75% travel and in a classroom in front of people every day. And now I do a lot of work like by myself <laughs> all the time. And there's a certain stamina and athleticism to traveling and teaching that I had just lost. So I was teaching for two days and in between still trying to manage this full-time job that doesn't include travel. And so I'm, I'm staying in this hotel and I really thought after that first day, I was wiped. And I could feel it in my bones that I was just did not have the stamina to keep up with what I was doing. But I also had a list of like five things that had to happen that all were going to happen on my computer. And I was real tempted just to say, all right, I'm going to put on some slippers. I'm going to order room service. I'm going to like get under the covers. I'm going to turn on a TV and not watch a cartoon and get this, get this work done by myself. And I get up to my hotel room and I set up my computer and I realize if I stay here, Number one, I'm going to fall asleep. <laughs> Number two, I just didn't feel that kind of motivation, that kind of spark or energy or excitement around what I was doing. So I knew enough about myself to know that where do I get my energy? I get it from people. So all I did was I took my laptop with me down to the restaurant in the hotel and did my work from there. Now, I had a couple cues to people that I was not there to socialize, right? I had I had headphones in, I had my head down, but just being around people um, helped me be inspired, helped me get my work done faster. And I think that that's certainly an element of woo that, that can't be ignored. Um, Lisa in the chat room, she says, if woo is high and communication isn't, which it's very, very possible that mm -hmm. that happens, it might manifest itself more quietly. Woo relator, woo individualization. No, totally right on. I love, and I, and I just love that idea of a conversation where we don't get so locked in on a single kind of single bit of it, but how does it affect uh, what's kind of right. going on around it as we think about it? Speaking of that, as we think about working with others, uh, what, sure. what should we expect if th this is not us, what can we look for? If you're working with someone with woo, expect a genuine presence among people. Um, they can do social. Uh, they're attracted and energized by it too. So it's not just like they're they're the best at schmoozing. It's that, no, they're authentically there to create some hospitality and it feeds them. Trust that that is true um, and, and that it's life-giving to them. I think if you don't have woo and you're working with folks at first who do, it can feel like it's a little bit of an act sometimes. But the moment that you really open your eyes and see what's going on, you'll realize, no, this is who they are. This is beautiful. Um, expect some dynamic interactions, um, the speed with which they can offer and create comfort. Um, they have a talent at diffusing awkwardness. Um, now, they might be kind of impatient or drained when they're asked to work alone. Uh, there's a song from an animated movie. Um, I think Megan Trainer sings it. It's I'm better when I'm dancing. <laughs> and I think about that with Woo. I'm better when I'm among people. I'm better when I'm on. So if you're working with somebody with Woo and let's say you're preparing for an event, they might not quite feel like they're into it in those prep meetings. Um, it does not mean that they're not there. They are going to switch on when it's presentation mode and, and trust that they're going to come alive when they're with other people. Some a comment in the chat about uh, Wu looking like Includer in some in some regards because it's you come into a group of people and you kind of want all of them to be a part of it. I think the difference is Includer actually thinks about all the other people. Wu just takes what the universe gives them. And so, I think Includer know. thinks about the whole. How right. do I make somebody feel like they're a part of something? Wu is much more one on one, sort of a direct attack. I want you and me to have a great bond between us. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I oftentimes get into groups. I like that, that one-on-one -on -one idea, Micah, because as I'm thinking about how I attack groups when I, when I join them, because I have a definite agenda. I'm like, okay, I want to mm -hmm. meet everybody. Like I want to meet everybody here. How am I going to do that? Yeah. And, but I'm not thinking about who I'm leaving out or who I'm, or, or the whole, like you said, the wholeness of the group. I'm definitely coming at it from my agenda in some mm -hmm. ways and, and not, agenda in a bad way. Again, we use that. It's kind of has a little bit of a native connotation in English, but 
the, the agenda. And I want to get through all these people. I want to meet them. I want to see how they can be used. Sure. I want to see what we can do with them. So that's pretty cool. How can we recognize someone with Haiwu? Well, right now I'm going to recognize Marta on her Facebook group. I asked, hey, what do we love about Wu? What's its power and edge? And she said this line that I just think is fantastic. She said, Wu naturally creates a safe space for positive interaction. Um, so I think that's something to celebrate. Celebrate the space that they create um, and include others in that celebration. So somebody with Wu is going to see the world through analyzing the distance between people um, and make that distance smaller in your recognition. Ask people who know them or people who work with them to lend their words or even maybe to show up in person to recognize this, this person with Wu. How do we stretch them? This is a good one, I think, on Wu, because I don't think I, I spend a lot of time thinking about this. So mm -hmm. uh, a little learning here, Micah. How do, how do we stretch those with Wu? Tap into their natural awareness of others as the glue that could be a great superpower for your team. So it's maybe stretching Jim, like we talked about a little bit more toward that whole mentality, the includer side of things, um, invite them to purposefully make people feel at ease, or maybe even if you're their manager, invite them to clue you in on ways that you as a leader could help other people feel seen and feel appreciated. Um, also, I think don't expect woo to be a catch all term for social talent. It is an influencing theme. It doesn't live in that relationship building category. And without other themes, this person might not necessarily enjoy long-term relationships or thrive at connecting with clients or customers or even people in their personal life at a truly deep, long level. It doesn't make their connection any less relevant. It doesn't make it any less important. Um, but don't set them up to fail by assuming because they have woo, they're going to be great at all things relationship. In season three, we talked about themes in the sense of uh, strengths-based leadership from a leadership mm -hmm. perspective. And I think, Micah, you said something that triggered me to think of stretching a woo of when you are a manager and you're teaching and you have another woo in your group, it's often easy to give them the responsibility to to be the influence, but then never really let them do it. You mm -hmm. you kind of bend, since you're you're excited by that, you do it well. I find myself in the situation when I'm in a room of woos is I, I try to compete instead of allowing them to, to develop and, and to have their, have their time, right? With that. Oh, that's, that's great. That's probably going to go into our next piece around how can you partner with them? Yeah. Let's talk about um, that. I, I'm thinking, you know, allow, allow there never to be too much of a party, right? Woo kind of creates this little party around it. Like, like a one man band, a woo is a one person party, right? Allow that to exist on as many levels as there are woo in the room, right? So, um, there's, uh, it, it can get to that place where you're competing. You don't have to, it's not going, it's sort of like that idea that, you know, can't, your candle doesn't get any more dim by lighting other candles, more people making more people feel comfortable. Um, it doesn't have a negative effect. Uh, the other thing I would say around how to partner with Woo is feed them parties, feed them events, feed them social gatherings. If your Woo friends are feeling maybe a little bit lackluster or seeming to you like they're a little bit down, take them somewhere where there are people. They might forget how much energy it provides them. So offer that as, as something that you can always offer. Also, let them know what you need in order to be delighted or in order to be won over. They want to give it to you. You know, even if it's something like, hey, don't talk to me until my coffee mug is empty. Um, just say that. If that's true about you, they will be happy to oblige. No, it's good. It's good advice. I, my mind is really now like waiting for situations when I can intentionally pull back a little bit and say, oh, there's another, there's another influencer. There's another woo who, yeah, who, another needs, going on who, <laughs> need, who needs some time. How can I encourage that? Right. How can I allow that as we think about partnering? Um, how can I let that happen? And, and I think, you know, any of the themes could strategic yeah. and right. As we think about these themes bumping into one another in groups, how do we that in that maturity model, how do we allow it to happen or, or even better, how do we amplify it in a way that is encouraging to the other person? I, I love that you brought that up. You know, there is an element of competition to, to woo. It stands for winning others over. So, um, for me, it feels like I know when I've gotten there with a person and it's more like I'm competing to be, 
to be loved <laughs> on an individual basis. But if there's another woo in the room, I think that you have the opportunity for it to be all on the same level where you're just bumping into each other, or you have that opportunity to rise up one level and say, how are we collaborating? And and maybe at the end of the day, that means that you're getting together with that other influencer, whether it's woo or, or any of the other influencing themes, and discussing the art of how well you did influencing. Maybe you're arranging your goals around, you know, who can we influence? How can we do this better? How can we affect? And I, I'll just say it, that word manipulate kind of makes my stomach hurt. I, I really don't like that. Be, be, but I do know that these are influencing themes. What we mean by that is positively affecting other people on purpose. And so maybe it is. Let's let's talk about that on purpose with people. Let's let's talk about that in terms of what did we achieve together as multiple influencers that we couldn't do on our own. I, and I don't think those words need to have a negative connotation. You know, uh, adjust would be another word that my chiropractor uses adjustment or manipulation <laughs> to get to get my to get me healthy. Yeah. Right. And sometimes we need things to move. So uh, be careful. I think it has intent. Like, what is our intent with that? Sure. Right. And and you could use, you can flower it up with any words. If our yeah. intent is not good, it's negative. So, okay. We've been going through uh, the, 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 this, these are the last challenges of the year, Micah. We have a, a, a dominant theme challenge, a lesser Maybe theme challenge. Maybe we should have a ideation communication. Maybe we should have a general challenge next week during our wrap-up party. Yeah, no, we'll, so we'll these actually... these might be the last challenges of the year. Maybe we'll take a little input from folks on the Facebook page of what would you like us to do in the wrap party uh, next yeah. week if you've got some things you want to throw in there. Go ahead out to the Facebook group, facebook.com slash groups slash called to coach. That's group. If you're not in there already, ask to be invited. I will put you in there. We will also put these challenges out there. Micah posts them to Instagram at strengths talk and uh, we'll listen for a little bit of feedback. What would you like to hear us? We may not be able to do it all, but we'll give it a try. Sure. Micah, as we think about these challenges, I'll post them in the chat room uh, as well, but uh, let's roll through. them. Okay. Number one, um, is in general, your challenge, if you have high woo, so this is a dominant theme challenge for those of us who are dominant in the theme of woo. I'm going to call this just spending time in daily interaction is your coaching challenge. Three ways you can do that. One, spend one hour this week intentionally in public. Take something that you would normally do alone and do it among people. So if you are a, uh, if you like to work out on a treadmill alone in your house, go out for a run in a park instead. If you like to, you know, put your head down and get your work done, take your laptop to a coffee shop. Um, if you do your, your grocery shopping on your phone, like I do alone, go to the store. <laughs> Just see how you can do one of those things that you normally would do by yourself. Spend one hour um, just in public instead. Can, can I add to that, Micah, before mm -hmm. you move on? Um, let me challenge you to try this at work. Like this yeah, is, I do fun. this all the time. Like get at work if you can. Get in a public space. Like, yes. in not all workplaces honor that. In fact, even here at Gallup, as I started doing that, people joke all the time, like that the atrium is my office. Mm -hmm. They're like, hey, is it okay if I'm in your office? You know, they, they say that to me all the time. Curtis started some music. And I'm like, hey, thanks for turning the music on in my office this morning. Um, but people know me for being out, for being public. And yeah, be if there. you've got that, give it a try. Try it at work. Mm -hmm. See what happens. It may be met with a little bit of resistance at first or a little bit of weirdness. Give it a try, though. You or may if it find, feels weird, yeah, you know, yeah. bring a friend with you. Instead of meeting in somebody's office, meet with somebody else in a public space. Go for yeah. a walk. Yeah. Because sometimes I was thinking as you were thinking about like Starbucks and some of those kinds of things, those are definite strangers. And that may not have the same impact is if you actually try that at work. Like these are people, you know, what happens if you sit somewhere where mm -hmm. people can see you again, based on your work environment, that may be weird. Right. But you just, just give it a try. I'd be interested in your feedback on that. It's, it's been weird. great for me. Still do it. It's only one hour <laughs> and it's a challenge. That's why we call it a challenge. You've I got love it. This. I love it. All right. Number two. <laughs> Go somewhere you don't go every day. Um, a new floor, a different hallway. Maybe if you're if you're not at work, maybe it's a post office <laughs> or someplace that you don't go every day. Break your routine so you're going to see people you don't see daily. Now this could be at work people you maybe interact with on email, um, but somebody that you don't see in person every day is what what you're like looking for. And once you're there, greet three people. Yeah, and it's holiday season. And lots of people are out shopping. That could be another environment where you're waiting in long lines mm -hmm. for whatever. Greet the people around you. You probably do that already, but try it intentionally. 
Try to yes, say. And with new people. Right. No, right on. Number, t- number three. Number three, I want you to practice the skill of learning names and using them in conversation. Um, my very favorite, uh, absolute best college professor was adamant about the belief and assertion that it is not a talent to be good or bad with names. You're not born with the ability to be good or bad with names. It is a skill and you can learn it. And for Jan Kaufman, it's, uh, that is now the, the Jan Kaufman challenge. Practice it. Practice your skill of learning names and using them. Yeah, no, that's good. That's, that's one I need to, I really need to work on. I meet so many people. Um, it's hard, but you're right. We need to do it. Okay. Lesser theme challenge. What do we do? So if this is a, a lesser theme for you, meaning it's probably near the end of your, your Clifton Strengths theme sequence, it doesn't mean it's a weakness. Um, it doesn't mean that you're horrible in social situations. It just means it's a pattern that doesn't give you energy. Um, your challenge then is just to assess how do you build your community? Challenge number one, identify one of your dominant talents that makes you curious about people. You know, maybe this is your learner. Maybe it's input. Maybe it's competition. What makes you curious about others? Name that. And number two, make a list of three great conversation starters that you can have in your pocket at all times to ask folks. That will help you connect to other people. Remember, the secret to connecting with people is that everyone's favorite topic, whether they want to admit it or not, is themselves. So when you are making this list of three great conversation questions, make sure that it is others focused. What are three ways you can ask somebody about themselves? This year during the interviewing cycle that, that I do for the for the job they pay me to do here at Gallup, which is super cool to, to recruit for technology, we started the interview with the question, tell me a little bit about how you got here specifically with your technology. And it, man, that was such a good Whoa. question this year. I got so many people to get at that part right and really tell the story. Like, why am I here today? And everybody was appropriate. I never had to stop anybody. I never had to say, okay, that's enough, like enough of you. But it was one of those questions that was very them centered, very them specific. Tell me how you got here today. And I just think um, my mom would do this. She's got to have woo number one. I just, there's, there's no doubt about that. And she, whenever she meets people, she's, she asks this question, which I've stolen from time to time. Tell me how you fit into this group. Like how, why are you here? Or how do you fit into this? What's your, you know, what's Mm. your connection here? And man, people will just tell her anything. She's great at remembering those things, but that's a great, I think, Micah, that's a great lesser theme challenge as well. Have that conversation starter because woos do it kind of naturally. If you don't do it naturally, have that available. Like have a go-to question that will get people talking. And Chris in the chat room just brought up a great idea around that go-to question. Maybe tailor it to your audience. Have a couple different go-to questions for your audience. So I got to say this out loud. This needs to be on the recording. His favorite go-to question for his kids and, you know, group of four to five-year-olds around his kids is, who's your favorite Paw Patrol pup? (laughs) And already in the chat room, like six people have been able to answer that question. So coming back to that um, advice or, or idea I had, around know your audience if you're if you've got high woo even if you don't maybe think about how can you make different people feel comfortable and have have an arsenal of great questions and then really listen to the answer yeah there's a novel thought right <laughs> actually knew? actually listen actually to the answer stop I've, talking I, after you ask it i have found out um so the last two years through the interviewing process that i do i've actually documented every single thing Every single question, I think it through in a, in a rubric, but I also write it out. That has really helped me remember. So, mm. so we think of whether that's coaching or whatever. And, you know, in a in a social situation, you're in the line at the store. It's going to be hard to ask questions. And hold on, wait a minute. <laughs> I, let me pull out. That's going to be it's going to be weird, right? But don't forget, right? In some of these situations, uh, it's been really really helpful for me to kind of just jot down some of those answers and 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 take good notes. From a strategic perspective, it was super great Could because I was interviewed. I interviewed 50 people this year. It's, it's tough to remember the early interviews and having those notes was super, super helpful. So woo coaches out there, if you've been not doing this in some form and you think you can remember it, mm. you probably can't. So uh, you, you probably need to come up with some kind of system that's working. Micah, we're done. 34, any final thoughts you'd put on here? And then, of course, you know, next week we're going to spend a bunch of time celebrating. Yeah. But 
next week we're going to think about it a lot. You know, one of the things that I didn't bring up that I asked a lot of people with high woo, you know, what should we talk about? Or, you know, what do you wish people understood about it? And and one of it is just that woo isn't just one flavor. And you could say that about all the themes. And hopefully what we've explored in this season, especially is how do you, every theme is like an orchestra, right? How do you, how do you play the different instruments within that theme at, at different times? And specifically about woo, one of the comments that comes up a lot is it's not always, um, the sort of greatest showman version, right? It's not always Zumba instructors. Um, it's sometimes my woo can say, I know what you need and I'm willing to give it to you in a quieter way. Um, it, what it always is, is acknowledgement of others. Uh, and, and that's beautiful no matter how it's happening. Right on. Well, we'll remind everyone to take full advantages of all the resources we have available at the Gallup Strength Center, just gallupstrengthcenter.com. You can send us your questions or comments. If you want to influence those through a blog post, maybe you got some stuff up in your head that uh, you want to write out and get to us, send that to us in an email. If you think this could be, we could use this in our coach's blog, coaching at gallup.com, put guest blogger in the subject line. That'll make its way over to Micah and we can work through that to see if we can get you on the coach's blog. Big thanks to many of you. 2018, we saw a lot of guest coaches uh, join us in the in the blog, and we love to have those. So if you're thinking mm -hmm. about it, get it done. We really want it to be original work. We're looking for four to 600 words. So just a lot of people ask me that question. That's what we're looking for. You can also catch the recorded audio and video of this program, as well as all the past ones are available at our coaches blog, everything out there. If you haven't bookmarked that site, you should, coaching at gallup.com. If you're interested in becoming a Gallup certified coach, strengths coach, or if you are interested or need more training, we have a bunch of stuff coming up in 2019. You might want to stay close to our courses site. We've got a little bit of everything for everybody. Head out to courses.gallup.com. If you have questions on any of it, send us an email, coaching at gallup.com. If you want to stay up to date with the new series coming up here for Theme Thursday Season 5, you might want to subscribe or follow over there at our Eventbrite page. So just go to gallup.eventbrite, E-V-E-N-T-B-R-I-T-E -E -E is how that's spelled, eventbrite.com. And you'll get a notification. If you follow us over there, you'll get a notification because we're going to be loading Season 5, Theme Thursday, in about a week. So you might want to get over there and get followed so you get notified when we do that. Join us on the Facebook page. I mentioned that earlier, facebook.com slash groups slash called to coach. That will get you there. Um, as well. I'll let you in. We'll look forward to the last theme Thursday of 2018. Next Thursday, come out and join us live. It'll kind of be a free for all. We'll be taking us uh, spending a lot of time in the chat room. We want you to interact with us this week and give us some ideas. We'll see you back here next Thursday. And with that, we'll say goodbye, everybody.